Welcome back to Cheddar, everyone. Mattel held its virtual analyst day today, and the company says it, quote, transformation strategy. That transformation strategy is working. Mattel's net sales in 2020 increased for the second year in a row and outperformed the industry in the third quarter fourth quarter and the full year amid the coronavirus pandemic. The company also experienced growth in all three power brands during the fourth quarter, Barbie, Hot Wheels and Fisher Price. Joining us now is Lisa McKnight, who is the senior vice president and head of Barbie and Dolls at Mattel. Lisa, great to have you here with us today. Uh, super excited for this conversation. We got to know what was the biggest catalyst to your division's success, especially in the fourth quarter. Well, thanks, Brad. It's great to be here. You know, Barbie's been experiencing some exciting momentum over the past few years, and the pandemic certainly did not slow us down. We've been driving our brand purpose, which is to inspire the limitless potential in every girl, leaning into culture, and of course, creating a ton of exciting design-led innovative product. All of that's been contributing to the success of Barbie. And we're looking at some of the year over year revenue change. You know, when you think about the successes year over year and what particularly in this environment was different about the consumer, what would you kind of point back to? Well, the entire toy industry performed quite well against the backdrop of the pandemic and Mattel certainly outperformed and outpaced. We have a stable of, you know, legacy brands that consumers um, connect with and Brands like Barbie were especially appealing. Not only is Barbie, again, the premier brand in connecting to culture, reflecting what's going on around us, but we made a real effort to shift our strategies. We leaned into social to make sure that we were cultivating conversation right out of the gate and providing not only entertaining content, but also, also important relevant content to help parents navigate through this incredible time. What other categories does that enter Barbie into when you think about that direct-to-consumer strategy to drive more revenue and increase sales? Well, what I'm really excited about is every segment of the Barbie business was up last year. And in fact, all regions of the world were also up last year. And, you know, we had our highest growth uh, year over year um, in two decades. So uh, Barbie is incredibly strong um, right now with a really profound foundation. Having said that, though, we certainly had some breakouts. We introduced um, the new product line that you're showing now called Barbie Extra. That is a line that is um, hyper relevant in terms of fashion and trend with great details. And it's reaching our core audience, but we've also seen it's appealing to an older girl, which is giving us um, incremental sales, which is very exciting. We also saw great success with our tried and true legacy item called the Dream House. The Dream House has been in the line since 1962. We constantly reinvent it, and last year we sold one Dream House every minute. It did incredibly well because of its play value and um, resonance with parents that grew up with the Dream House themselves. When you talked earlier about re reflecting society and the cultural moments that we find ourselves in as well, uh, I, I think about the Playfair program standing up against racism and violence faced by black Americans. and. and even more recently, we should talk about that, uh, that Asian Americans face as well in the country. Um, how has this been reflected in your products when reimagining Barbie? Well, inclusivity, diversity, representation are all incredibly important to the Barbie brand. And today we have the most diverse fashion doll line in the marketplace. We learned, um, you know, five or six years ago that it was important to keep pace with culture and make sure that we were reflecting the world around kids today. And we've done just that. We've been very proud of not only the product introductions that we've made over the few, past few years with, you know, more diversity from skin tone to hair color to eye color, hair fiber and different body types. But also last year we introduced two dolls with physical differences, a doll with vitiligo, a wheelchair Barbie. They were two of our best performers. But we didn't stop with product. We've also been adjusting our communication and really leaning into important conversations. Barbie has a vlog on YouTube and we addressed racism head on in the fall with a vlog episode of Barbie talking to her best friend Nikki about systemic racism. It sparked a ton of conversation, trended on Twitter, and became um, you know, an important teaching tool for parents. Lisa, running low on time here, so I gotta go rapid fire with these next couple topics, but wanna make sure that we do hit them. First and foremost, a fun one, Barbie movie starring Margot Robbie. What can you tell us there, and what should viewers be watching for? 
just wait for it. We are so excited. The script is coming along and it's going to be a really epic film. Additionally here we note about the digital gaming app and how the company has incorporated that for Barbie Dreamhouse and the development there. Take us through some of the opportunities you see when it comes to those new ways to attract customers, especially over the digital mediums. So obviously we have to go where our consumers are going and certainly they're consuming digital media like never before. We've had great success with our kid targeted gaming app and we're going to be looking at expanding the audience um, in the future years. Two more quick ones here. Barbie in the age of where we should have been for years in body positivity, um, how does the brand reflect the growing calls for being confident in oneself regardless of what your body looks like? Again, Barbie is all about inclusivity, empowerment, and reflecting the world around us. We've got five different body types now in the line across Barbie and Ken. And again, we are trying to make sure that everyone feels beautiful and everyone sees themselves somewhere in the line. And perhaps very importantly, impacting environmental sustainability here. Uh, we got to talk about that because Mattel's previously announced the goal to achieve 100% recycled, recyclable or bio-based plastic materials in all products and packaging. 2030, the target there. What are some of the early actions the company's taking? Well, I couldn't be more proud of Mattel's commitment to sustainability by 2030. Naturally, all of our brands are working on their own answer to that. I'll have more to share with you on Barbie specific plans later this spring. Lisa, you, you crushed it in the rapid fire, the red zone, if you will. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Lisa McKnight, who is the senior vice president and head of Barbie and dolls at Mattel joining us today.